reading through the Bible in one year, October 13th, 1 Kings chapter 16, Colossians chapter 3, Ezekiel 46, and Psalm 102. Now, the word of Yahweh came to Jehu, son of Hanani, against Baasha. Because I raised you up from the dust and made you ruler over my people Israel, but you have walked in the ways of Jeroboam and have caused my people Israel to sin, angering me with their sins. Take note, I will eradicate Baasha and his house, and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Anyone who belongs to Baasha and dies in the city, the dogs will eat. Anyone who is his and dies in the field, the birds will eat. The rest of the events of Baasha's reign, along with all his accomplishments and might, are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. Baasha rested with his ancestors and was buried in Terza. His son, Elah, became king in his place. But through the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani, the word of Yahweh had also, rather also, had come against Baasha and against his house because of all the evil he had done in the Lord's sight. His actions angered Yahweh, and Baasha's house became like the house of Jeroboam, because he had struck it down. In the twenty-sixth year of Judah's king Azza, Elah, son of Baasha, became king over Israel. He reigned in Terza two years. His servant, Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him while Elah was in Terza getting drunk in the house of Arza, who was in charge of the household at Terza. In the twenty-seventh year of Judah's king Azza, Zimri went in and struck Elah down, killing him. Then Zimri became king in his place. When he became king, as soon as he was seated on the throne, Zimri struck down the entire house of Baasha. He did not leave a single male, including his kinsmen and his friends. So Zimri destroyed the entire house of Baasha, according to the word of Yahweh he had spoken against Baasha through the prophet Jehu. This happened because of all the sins of Baasha, those of his son Elah, which they committed and caused the rather and caused Israel to commit, angering Yahweh, God of Israel, with their worthless idols. The rest of the events of Elah's reign, along with all his accomplishments, are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. In the twenty seventh year of Judah's king Azza, Zimri became king for rather for seven days in Terza. Now, the troops were encamped against Gibbethon of the Philistines. When these troops heard that Zimri had not only conspired, but also had struck down the king, then all Israel made Omri, the army commander, king over Israel that very day in the camp. When Zimri saw that the city was captured, hold on, Omri, along with all Israel, marched up from Gibbethon and besieged Terza. When Zimri saw that the city was captured, he entered the citadel of the royal palace and burned it down over himself. He died because of the sins he com- because of the sin he committed by doing what was evil in Yahweh's sight and by walking in the ways of Jeroboam and the sin he caused Israel to commit. The rest of the events of Zimri's reign, along with the conspiracy he instigated, are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. At that time, the people of Israel were divided making, uh, were divided. Half the people followed Tibni, son of Ganath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. However, the people who followed Omri proved stronger than those who followed Tibni, son of Ganath. So Tibni died, and Omri became king. In the 31st year of, king, of Judah's king Azza, Omri became king over Israel. He reigned 12 years. He reigned six years in Terza. Then he bought the hill of Samaria from Shemer for 150 pounds of silver, and he built up the hill. He named the city he built Samaria based on the name Shemer, the owner of the hill. Omri did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He did more evil than all who were before him. He walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, in every respect, and continued in, in his sin. Now that he caused Israel to commit, angering the Lord, God of Israel, with their worthless idols. The rest of the events of Omri's reign, along with his accomplishments 
and the uh, might he exercised are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. Omri rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria. His son Ahab became king in his place. Ahab, son of Omri, became king over Israel in the 38th year of Judah's king Azah. Ahab, son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 22 years. But Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight more than all who were before him. Then, as if following the sin of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, were not enough, he married Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, saying, uh, rather, king of the Sidonians, and then proceeded to serve Baal and bow in worship to him. He set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal that he had built in Samaria. Ahab also made an Asherah pole. Ahab did more to anger the Lord God of Israel than all the kings of Israel who were before him. During his reign, Hiel the Bethelite, Bethel, sorry, Bethelite, there we go, built Jericho. At the cost of Abiram, his firstborn, he laid its foundation. And at the cost of Segub, his youngest, he finished its gates. According to the word of Yahweh, he had spoken through Joshua, son of Nun. The notes here explain that pretty well. It's a good section to go through. Let's go ahead and go on to Colossians chapter 3 now. Paul continues. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, uh, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient, and you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your Creator. In Christ, there is no, or rather said here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on, remember we're taking off before, here's what we're putting on, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you are to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace of Christ, to which you are also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in, among you in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they uh, won't become discouraged. Slaves, obey your human masters in everything. Don't work only while being watched as people pleasers, but work wholeheartedly, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, do it from a whole heart or rather do it from the heart, as something done for the Lord and not for people, knowing that you will receive, excuse me, the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ. 
for the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong he has done, and there is no favoritism. Masters, deal kindly, rather deal with your slaves justly and fairly, since you know that you too have a master in heaven. And that is all the notes. Let's go on now to Ezekiel 46. Continuing through the uh, through Ezekiel's a prophetic vision about the temple. This is what the Lord God says. The gate of the inner court that faces east is to be closed during the six days of work, but it will be opened on the Sabbath day and opened on the day of the new moon. The prince should enter from the outside by way of the gate's portico and stand at the gate's doorpost while the priest sacrifices his burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. He will bow and worship at the gate's threshold and then depart. But the gate is not to be closed until evening. Evening for, for Jews is the end of the day. It begins the next day. The people of the land will also bow and worship before the Lord at the entrance of the gate, or of that gate, on the Sabbaths and new moons. The burnt offerings that the prince, or rather that the prince presents, that the prince presents to the Lord on the Sabbath day is to be six unblemished lambs and an unblemished ram. The grain offering will be half a bushel with the ram, and the grain offering with the lambs will be whatever he wants to give, as well as a gallon of oil for every half bushel. On the day of the new moon, the burnt offering is to be a young, unblemished bull, as well as six lambs and a ram without blemish. He will provide a grain offering of half a bushel with the uh, bull, half a bushel with the ram, and whatever he can afford with the lambs together with a gallon of oil for every half bushel. When the prince enters, he is to go in by way of the gate's portico and go out the same way. When the people of the land come before the Lord at their appointed times, whoever enters by way of the, uh, of the north gate to worship is to go out by way of the south gate. Whoever enters by way of the south gate is to go out by, uh, by way of the north gate. No one may return through the gate by which he entered, but is to go out by the opposite gate. When the people enter, the prince will enter with them, and when they leave, he will leave. At the festivals and appointed times, the grain offering will be half a bushel with the bull, half a bushel with the ram, and whatever he wants to give with the lambs, along with a gallon of oil for every half bushel. When the prince makes a free will offering, Whatever, or rather, whether a burnt offering or fellowship offering as a free will offering to the Lord. The gate that faces east is to be open for him. He is to offer his burnt offering or fellowship offering, just as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he will go out, and the gate is to be closed after he leaves. You are to offer an unblemished year-old male lamb as a daily burnt offering to the Lord. He will offer it every morning. You are also to prepare a grain offering every morning along with it. Three quarts with one third of a gallon of oil to moisten the fine flour and a grain offering to the Lord. This is a permanent statute to be observed regularly. They will offer the lamb, the grain offering, and the oil every morning as a regular burnt offering. This is what the Lord God says. If the prince gives a gift to each of his sons as their inheritance, it will belong to his sons. It will become their property by inheritance. But, it's, but if he gives a gift from his inheritance to one of his servants, it will belong to that servant until the year of Jubilee, the year of freedom. Then it will revert back to the prince. His inheritance belongs only to his sons. It is theirs. The prince must not take any of the people's inheritance, evicting them from their property. He is to provide an inheritance for his sons from his own property, so that none of my people will be displaced from his own property. Then he brought me to the entrance that was at the north, sorry, that was at the side of the gate, into the priest's holy chambers which faced north. I saw a place there at the far western end, and he said to me, this is the place where the priest will boil the guilt offering and the sin offering, 
and where they will bake the grain offering so that they will not bring, rather, so they do not bring them into the outer court and transmit holiness to the people. Next, he brought me to the outer court and led me past its four corners. There was a separate court in each of its corners. In the four corners of the outer court, there were enclosed courts, 70 feet long by 52 and a half feet wide. All four corner areas had the same dimensions. There was a stone wall around the inside of them, around the four of them, with ovens built at the base of the walls and on, and on all sides. He said to me, These are the kitchens where those who minister at the temple will cook the people's sacrifices. Finally now, Psalm 102 is where we conclude today. Lord, hear my prayer. Let my cry for help come before you. Do not hide your face from me in my day of trouble. Listen closely to me. Answer me when I call. For my days vanish like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is suffering, withered like grass. I even forget to eat my food. Because of the sound of my groaning, my flesh sticks to my bones. I am like an eagle owl, like a little owl among the ruins. I stay awake. I am like a solitary bird on a roof. My enemies taunt me all day long. They ridicule and use my name as a curse. I eat ashes like bread and mingle my drinks with tears. Because of your indignation and wrath, for you have picked me up and thrown me aside. My days are lengthening like a shadow, but I wither like away like grass or rather and I wither away like uh, wither away like grass but you Yahweh are enthroned forever your fame endures to all generations you will rise up and have compassion on Zion for it is time to show favor to her the appointed time has come for your servants take delight in its stones and favor its dust the nations will fear the name of Yahweh, and all the kings of the earth your glory. For Yahweh will rebuild Zion. He will, re rather, he will appear in his glory. He will pay attention to the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This will be written for a later generation. And a people who have not yet been created will praise the Lord. He looked down from his holy heights. Yahweh gazed out from heaven to earth to hear a prisoner's groaning, to set free those condemned to die, so that they might declare the name of Yahweh in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem, when peoples and kingdoms are assembled to serve Yahweh. He has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. I say, my God, do not take me in the middle of my life. Your years continue throughout all generations. Long ago, you established the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. All of them will wear out like clothing, and will or rather, and you will change them like a garment, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years will never end. Your servants' children will dwell securely, and their offspring will be established before you. All right, that is all for today. So, God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.